here from uh, Juggernaut Training Systems, JTSStrength.com. Got a question from Facebook that I want to answer for you guys. The uh, question was from Ed Stedman. Ed was asking about, uh, he owns his own facility, trains athletes, and uh, he was asking about how to educate parents and athletes about uh, who play the same sport the whole year, about why maybe that isn't the best idea. And when you are dealing with with athletes who are always in season, um, how you, how I go about training them. Um, having athletes who are, who are always in season is definitely a big issue uh, here my, where my facility is in Southern California because club sports are a, are a huge, huge thing around here. Um, whether it's volleyball, basketball, um, baseball, lacrosse, water polo, really all of those, all of those sports in soccer, um, those kids really never have an off season because they play for their high school team and they play for a club team. So, you know, maybe they have a total of, of two months off the entire year. And those are most likely not two consecutive months, but, you know, two weeks here, a week here, three weeks there. Um, so, you know, that's, that's just the reality of the situation. And I don't think it's really going to change anytime soon, even though it's definitely not the ideal model for these, these kids to, to develop to their maximum potential. But, uh, you know, they're kind of, they're kind of caught in a vicious, a vicious cycle that, you know, if they don't play for, uh, if they don't play on this travel ball team, then they're not going to make this club team. And if they don't make this club team, then they, you know, they're less likely to make varsity on their high school team, or they're not going to make, make, uh, you know, an Olympic development team, or it's different for different sports, but, um, you know, the, the coaches and, and the club directors have really got them convinced that, that this is what they need to be doing. And I think most often that's the fact because it's putting more money in, uh, in one of their pockets with, and losing sight of what's in the best interest for the athlete. With that being said, uh, what you can do to try and combat that um, is educate the parents and athletes as to why that's not the best thing for them to do. Um, first off is just making it apparent to them that doing the same activity all year round will contribute to overuse injuries. Uh, plain, plain and simple, you know, there's plenty of data that a quick Google search will, will get you to, to show that, whether it's uh, torn ACLs and girls soccer players or, or all kinds of different things. Um, overuse injuries are very common and, and more common in people who are doing the same activity all, all year round. You know, you, that's, you could even explain it to them in such a common sense way as like, uh, developing carpal tunnel syndrome because you spend all day typing, you know, that's an overuse injury, tennis elbow, all, the, all those kind of things. Um, usually if parents understand that what they're doing with their kids uh, is more likely to lead to injury, uh, that's the quickest way to get them to change what they're doing. Um, the next reason why playing the same, the same sport the whole year round is not a good idea and, and what you need to educate parents and athletes alike about is that uh, sports skills are you know a technical tactical skill those are only as good as the physical capabilities supporting them so yeah maybe you know you have a great looking baseball swing technically you know but you're so weak and and uh, lack explosive you know, rotational strength that it only looks good, but the bat, your bat speed's terrible, you know, or you have great, uh, you know, great footwork on the volleyball court and make a really good platform to pass from, but you're so weak that you can't change direction, um, you know, or get your, get your butt down and get into a good position to actually get to the ball. So while it may, you may have all these, these great sports skills, they don't actually translate to being a good player because you don't have the physical abilities to back them up. Um, and obviously the only way to develop those physical abilities is to train them. And then I think maybe the toughest thing for them to understand, but the most important thing is that they're really limiting their long-term development as an athlete um, by 
playing the same sport all year round and never having an off season or a time where they can focus on their general physical preparedness because the body will fail to adapt over time to the increased load of sport practice. Because if all you're doing is practice, 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 and trying to develop technical tactile skills, you can only add so much more to that. You know, if you're only capable of certain outputs, you can't keep, you know, and you can't have a higher quality practice. Um, how do you just keep adding more and more practice time? You'll run out of time in the day, or the athlete will get hurt because they're not genetically predisposed to be able to handle that kind of workload. And the people who are still successful in that model are the ones who are very genetically predisposed to that, but you know they were going to be successful anyways. And not all of us are fortunate enough to, to work with that population. Also, uh, another point as far as their physical ability is limiting how good their sports skills can get. You know, if, if you're not coordinated and, and powerful and and you know can move with good rhythm and relaxation, you aren't going to be able to perform quality sport drills or at least as high quality as you would be able to. So you're going to have to do more. You know, most of the time they'll end up doing more reps of them because that they, they're not as they're not efficient enough to get what they need out of the ones they're already doing. And yeah, you know, that just continues to exacerbate the problem of having to practice too much and leading to overuse injuries and you know, limiting their, their long term their long term potential. I think a lot of young uh, a lot of parents get caught up in their kids being in these, you know, specializing in a sport early and whether they think they're gonna be the next Tiger Woods or or you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, they, they get all excited that their kid is the is the best, you know, twelve year old soccer player in in the county or in the state even, you know. But how often do those kids pan out to be the best, you know, eighteen year old player in the county or state? Very, very few times because they're usually, you know, an early mature, whatever it is, or they've been they've been putting all this energy toward developing their sporting skill rather than their general physical abilities. And while their sporting skill goes up very quickly and will peak at a young age, while the people who, who are bringing their general physical abilities up like this, their sporting skills are gonna do more of this kind of move. And, you know, that intersection um, is gonna, gonna happen between maybe 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, but that's when it actually matters. Um, so with that being said, you know, educate the parents about that kind of thing. Like it's it's kind of it's really an uphill battle, um, but you got to you got to do what you can. In the event that they continue to stay with the the model that they're they've been on, you know, playing the high school sport and the club sport, and never really having an off season. The other thing you can try and get them to do is to sort of designate one of the seasons or a part of one of the seasons as more of an off season, you know, whether there's less competition or less important competitions, um, or it's not as big a recruiting period or whatever it is, um, time where their general physical preparation can take priority over their sport practice. Um, that's important. But in, in the event that that doesn't happen, or even in that case, um, here are a couple things to keep in mind while you're training the in-season athlete. Um, first and foremost, you cannot hinder their physical ability to practice. There is one thing that all athletes have to do to be good, they have to practice. Um, because there's there's no magic exercise, you know, there's nothing magic that happens here in the weight room that's automatically gonna make someone a good, a good athlete, you know. There are football players who, for whatever reason, can't or are not good benchers. That doesn't mean that they automatically can't be a good football player. You know, volleyball players who can't squat, soccer players who can't do whatever it is, but but they can still be successful as long as they can practice. So it's your job as a physical preparation coach to enhance their physical abilities without hindering their ability to practice. Um, so that's the, that's the first thing to keep in mind. The way that you're gonna do that um, is by not making them sore and killing them in the weight room all the time because 
that's not going to make them better. You know, that's just going to make them more likely to get injured at practice or less able to develop the technical tactical skills that they need. Um, so to not hinder practice, you know, what you need to do is consider the physical stimulus that practices present to them and don't pile on to that same stress with similar movements. So basically, you know, if you're training a basketball or volleyball player and they jump a ton during practice, is they're not going to be able to jump higher by coming to your place after practice and doing tons of plyometrics, you know, and, and getting all these more contacts and jumps. All the all that's going to happen is their knees and their ankles are going to hurt, you know, or they're going to get overtrained. Or if you're dealing with a soccer player, um, you know, and they're doing a ton of sprinting in practice and and their coach is, is killing them with gassers and, and mile runs and whatever, you know, BS at the end of at the end of practice two, three, four times a week. You know, they're not gonna get faster by coming in to you and doing more sprints or more change of direction work. You know, that's just gonna overwork them, overstress the hamstrings, ankles, all that all that stuff. Um, so really what you need to do with those in-season athletes is look at low-cost ways to develop those same skills. Uh, so for an athlete who is jumping a lot in practice and they need to keep jumping higher uh, to be more successful, um, med medicine ball throws will be a great option for them uh, because you know it, it teaches explosive triple extension, but because you know they're not jumping really high. Um, there's not a big impact in the in the force of the landing, but it's still an explosive total body movement. Um, also, jumps onto a soft surface will be good, but if you have access to a high jump landing pit and they can jump up into that and land on there, you know, virtually no stress to the joints there, only the benefit of the jump. Um, or doing box jumps and jumps up a hill are also, you know, better obviously than like a hurdle hop or depth jumps or something where there's a really high impact landing force because jumping up onto the elevated surface reduces the forces of gravity um, so it'll be less stressful to, to your athlete's joints. Um, so with most most sports they're receiving a lot of stimulus from their practice whether it's sprints change of direction jumping in practice and but almost all that stimulus is directed towards the lower body. Um, with that being said, you need to really reduce the volume and intensity of their lower body training, all right, and look to develop general organism strength um, by using their upper body weights as their primary training stimulus. And because when you're dealing with an athlete, especially a young athlete, where they're not very strong, you know, if if you have a 15 year old boys volleyball player, you know, skinny as skinny as a stick and his bench goes up, now his whole body is stronger, all right? And that's what you're looking to develop. If he can get stimulus to his lower body from jumps at practice, and then uh, with you from med ball throws and a low volume of, of squatting, but then you know get his primary stimulus from whatever upper body weights it is, whether it's uh, you know bench or some weighted rowing or pull-ups, pullovers would be great in the case of a volleyball player. Um, and he gets stronger on that, you know, and then it's just kind of maintaining or using real sub-maximal loads with the lower body. His general organism strength has improved and his whole body is now stronger. So make sure respect what they're doing in practice, don't pile onto it, improve their general organism strength. Um, also during the season, it's going to be real important to improve the athlete's durability. Um, so if you have a baseball player, you know, swimmer, volleyball player, um, quarterback, whatever it may be, uh, overhead throwing athletes, you know, you need to be very mindful to do a lot of external rotation work with them uh, to balance out all the internal rotation they're doing when they're throwing or swimming or whatever it may be. Um, and then, you know, just doing a, a good job of doing restorative work like foam rolling, lacrosse ball, you know, stretching, real basic stuff that they're not going to do on their own. Make sure they're doing that with you. Um, and then be smart about your exercise selection. And when you have the opportunity to do something that is less stressful 
to their joints. Um, you know, if you have a safety squat bar and you have someone who's, whose shoulders go undergo a lot of stress in their sport practice and games, you know, use the safety squat bar so they don't have to external rotate more. Um, or use the Swiss bar when they're benching or do board press or floor press or reverse band press, take some, take some stress off their shoulders. Um, and it would also be a good idea in certain times of the year to pick exercises that limit their output capabilities. Um, so like the front squat has a limited output compared to the back squat. You know, no one can front squat as much as they, they can back squat, but you can still, you could do a, so you could front squat at a higher intensity um, than you would be with the, with the back squat, but still be using less weight. And even though it's hard for, hard for you to do, it's still, you know, if, if I, I, let's say 80% of my front squat is 300 pounds and 80% of my back squat is four is 400 pounds, um, it, every time will be less stressful for you to use um, 300 pounds than it will be to use 400 pounds, but you're still getting the stimulus that that 80% would provide to the body. So, you know, whether, whether that's... Uh, Front squat or using a Swiss bar again with a bench, which is harder to do. You know that that would be a good idea because that's not going to tax their central nervous system as much, and leave them more energy to practice, which, as I stated before, is the most important thing. Um, and the last thing to consider when you're training in-season athletes is to avoid competing for technical resources. Um, Charlie Francis, late great sprints coach uh, for Ben Johnson describe the central nervous system as a cup. You know, that cup has a finite capacity and everything you do, every high stress activity, is gonna fill that cup up to some degree. If the cup overflows, the athlete is overtrained. You know, and because that cup's capacity is finite, they're only able to do so much training and learn so many different motor patterns and technical skills. So while SPP, special physical preparation drills, are great and something that you wanna use with your, with your athletes, you need to use them as far away from the competition season or maybe if someone's always in season, as far away from the, the most important part of their competition seasons as possible. So let's say you have a baseball player and um, a pitcher and the snap throw, med ball throw where you're coming over three quarters like that is, an S, is a great SPP drill to, to improve his rotational power. Um, that is something that could potentially interfere with his actual throwing mechanics with the baseball, right? So while it's similar, it is not the same. So you need to put exercises like a snap drill or a snap throw as far away from, you know, when his more, most important baseball games are. So you're, you're not using up some of, some of that finite energy he has to develop the technical skills he needs with uh, an SPP drill. Um, and the last thing with your, with your in-season athletes is just educate them about nutrition, you know, sleeping well, doing things like ice bathing, contrast showers, massage, Graston, active release therapy, all that kind of good stuff um, so that they can be as healthy as possible and, and, you know, get the training done that they need to. So um, if you guys are looking for football in-season training advice. I just wrote an article about that on the website. It's just called football in-season training. Um, and it has a 12 week program laid out in it, which is exactly the way that I train our in-season football players here. So go to jtsstrength.com, check that out. Hopefully Ed, this answered your question and anyone else who had uh, similar questions and Thanks for watching.